So <clears throat> I've got a few interesting quotes here. Uh, let's not start with that one. Let's start with this one. from a, It was an advertisement by a doc. Here he quotes Thomas Edison. Um, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. Sounds neat. Um, maybe not that practical, huh? Maybe you're thinking that. Well, let's look at a couple of other quotes. I think what we're going to, what I'm going to show today is that these quotes actually are far truer than most people think. It's easy to get a thousand prescriptions, you know, again, think about the doc of today, but hard to get a single remedy. And remedies are hard not only for docs, but they're hard for patients. Let's don't blame the docs on all of this. Speaking of blaming docs, <sighs> finish last in your league and they call you an idiot. Finish last in medical school and they call you doctor. So there is no question, there is a difference in the performance level of docs. And let's go back to that first one that I talked about. And I'm going to, again, show you real data about this today. Uh, I'm going to do a series on the performance of docs in prevention. And um, I'm guessing that after this series, maybe after this first video, you will, you will agree with me that this uh, old Chinese proverb is very, very true. The inferior doc, I'm reading this sort of backwards. The inferior doc treats actual sickness. The mediocre doc attends to impending sickness and the superior doc prevents sickness. There is a significant variation in how well docs perform. And I'm going to uh, show you some statistics uh, to help, understand, help you understand this. First of all, what are these statistics? These come from a large group. As you know, I've uh, spent most of my career managing large groups of docs, 800, uh, 500, uh, and more. I've been a corporate medical director for a large part of, part of my life, and that gives me a very different perspective from the vast majority of docs that you're going to see. This is in Medicare Advantage, and <clears throat> this is a large staff, about 500 docs in Medicare Advantage. And um, why Medicare Advantage? Well, <clears throat> think about how you decide whether your doc is good. Uh, he went to a great school. Um, he trained at a great place. He, he, um, he's board certified. Uh, he listens to me. Um, he trained here in the U.S. rather than somewhere else. Well, let me give you some perspectives on each of those items, again, given my my, uh, my experience and my view. Um, in fact, I showed data in another video which showed that you, the doc needs to be very insecure, needs to be constantly questioning his or her own diagnosis, continually digging to find the diagnosis. Uh, studies have been done which show that docs that are uh, trained outside the U.S., in medical school at least, tend to do that more than regular doc, uh, than docs trained inside. And again, these populations are good docs. We're not talking about uh, bad docs in any of these groups. The thing about board certification, it's actually pretty unusual to work with a doc these days <clears throat> that does not have board certification. So that's not a great um, way of differentiating the doctor's skill either. The third item, the, uh, how well the doctor listens, how much time the doctor spends with you, how obsessive compulsive the doc tends to be with all your details, though, that does tend to help. But think about this. Again, this is performance data, actual performance data from a obviously blinded organization. Uh, and again, two issues, big organizations versus little ones and Medicare Advantage. Big organizations versus little ones. If your doc is a solo practitioner, or even if your doc is in a small group practice with even, or large, even 10 to 20 docs, they tend to not have the resources to hold up this kind of mirror, to 
gather information on the doctor's performance, show the doc, and then show the doc how the typical doc, how other docs are performing in this area. That's a critical process. If you've ever taken golf lessons and actually had a video of what you're doing, what you're doing from outside looks very different from how it feels inside. If you've ever uh, done public speaking and done videos, uh, what you feel from inside looks very different from what people are seeing, your audience is seeing from outside. And as you might guess, I'm painfully aware of that. And I'm, that's why I'm so appreciative of, the, uh, of your interest, the, the followers that I have. Now, <clears throat> very large organizations will do this for their docs. Uh, a solo practitioner, I haven't seen it yet. Even with uh, practices of 10 and 20, I haven't seen it yet where they will actually gather their performance data and and share it with them and compare it to other docs. That is critical. Now, <clears throat> let's, uh, I, I mentioned uh, Medicare Advantage a minute ago. Here's another thing, another concept. People think that Medicare Advantage is for poor people. They think it's, it's an HMO, I don't wanna do that. Uh, docs are gonna withhold care. That's not what's happening. Um, Medicare Advantage is growing dramatically and there are a couple of reasons why. The federal government is finding that it is better quality care. Now you can see debate on anything, you'll see debate on that. Originally when it came out, it actually cost more than fee-for-service Medicare. But why am I going into this level of detail? Here's why. Medicare Advantage actually pays the doc on more of a prospective uh, method. And here's what that means. If the doc can find a disease before the patient is aware of it, before the patient has symptoms, the doc gets paid better. So the Medicare has realized that this is a much better way to go. And it'll continue to grow. It'll, they'll continue to encourage docs to go with Medicare Advantage. And again, what you'll see with uh, like a large Medicare Advantage organization, you'll begin to see numbers like this where they're looking to see how good is the doc at uh, detecting un, uh, unnoticed disease or asymptomatic disease, disease that the patient doesn't feel. Well, you may ask, why is that important? If you do, I just have to hold my head. I mean, that's what this whole channel is about. Prevent disease. Don't wait till it happens. Let's look at this one, two, three, four, fifth category here, vascular disease. Bottom line, that's plaque. Let's talk about the three uh, bars, the three colors. The blue and the red bar are new docs, uh, docs that are your, your typical docs. Um, and the green bar is your docs that score the highest in other preventive areas like offering um, preventive services, flu shots, uh, offering uh, uh, mammography where appropriate, uh, making sure their patients get a hemoglobin A1C. In other words, these are those obsessive compulsive docs who want to make sure that the patient uh, knows what they've got going on and prevents disease rather than deals with it. Those kind of docs are finding uh, and this is a Medicare Advantage population, so it's 65 and older. They're finding disease in three quarters of those patients. Now, uh, again, if you've watched any of my other videos, you realize that that's not surprising. The number one cause of plaque in the arteries, or what's called here, and what Medicare classifies as um, hierarchical code category 108, in other words, vascular disease. Um, that's very common and it's caused the top one, two, and three causes are insulin resistance, prediabetes. These vascular things, this vascular disease causes heart attack, causes stroke, causes dementia. In other words, the major killers and uh, disablers in our country and the world. Um, it's incredibly common as we get older 
this helps a lot of people who watch the channel and think, no, you know, it's only for it's only fat people. It's only um, people that have diabetes. It's only people that eat high carb diets. It's only uh, all of those have some kernel of truth, but look at it. And if you're an internist, a primary care doc, and you're routinely seeing patients, you know that vascular disease and uh, prediabetes happens as we get older. The one comment I'd make about this is, in my experience, the 75% is underdiagnosed. I would guess it's more like 90, maybe 95% uh, vascular disease in a 65 and older population, which means by the time you're 65, the uh, vast majority of times you've had prediabetes, insulin resistance, for years. Um, <clears throat> I've gone on a long time. I will come back and cover some of these other categories. You'll see that we have some very interesting patterns regarding diabetes, uh, morbid obesity, malnutrition, uh, all big killers in our, uh, in our population, our society. Thank you for your interest.